Hello and welcome to um, winter in Eastbourne. As you can probably see, it's just started to rain. I was putting a solo arch on the back and uh, um, decided against that because it's January and it's cold and it's unpleasant. Um, hoping next year will be somewhere warmer. Um, so this is now five months until we go. We've got the winter uh, building up. Um, so this gives us an extra room, somewhere to work. So it's, um, it's really useful actually. Um, we've had three winters now on Fair Isle. One in, um, in the ice in uh, Holland uh, and two in the rain and wind in, uh, in England. Um, and at the moment I'm just rushing to try and get all the jobs done that I want um, before we do go in May. Um, so this one is to try and put up all this stainless steel for an arch over the back. We're quite, um, that's quite good for us actually because we're centre cockpit, we've got some room back there to, uh, to do it. So I've got two quite big panels to go up and they're going to get 550 watts out of it. Um, so on paper what well, that's got about 45 amps. Um, but of course nowhere near that much, you're lucky to get half that. Um, but yeah, I've got high hopes of these ones because they're, they're glass ones, they've got virtually no shading from there. The one that we've got at the moment is 150 watts, it's on top of the doghouse, uh, flexible panel. Um, you don't get much out of that at all, it's 150 watts. Um, and you'd expect obviously then to get about sort of 13, 14 amps on paper out of that. You'd be lucky to get half, we get about a quarter of that one because we're um, what, 51 degrees north here and two because it gets, you know, mainly actually because it gets shading from the boom, quite substantial shading. If you look at tests on the internet you'll see the odd line from standing rigging and things won't take the panel down too much. But shade a whole cell or more and you lose about half. So putting the panels across the stern out of the way of the boom makes sense. That involves trying to make a stainless steel frame, man enough to hold two large panels, which may not weigh too much but represents quite a bit of windage. So we're going to have to come up with a robust frame. That means not just relying on grub screws to hold the stainless steel joints together. So I had to mark the position of all the grub screw holes in all the joints and then cross drill them. Take it from me, you need a good sharp drill bit for this. So because of the windage issue, these things could be in tension as well as uh, compression. So I'm drilling a hole straight through here so that I can actually put a longer um, grub screw in. You can buy these longer grub screws. You can see that's the longer one. This is the standard length. So the longer grub screw will just make sure that the pole actually can't pull out if it comes under tension with some wind underneath. That's the idea anyway. Obviously the best thing really would be to weld all these, which I might end up doing at some stage. But I think this should work. So I'm going to put these in. A little bit of um, Loctite on each one. So now I've got this one that's going to go all the way through and make it impossible for the pipe to actually pull out and the lower one will tighten up against it and stop any little bit of jiggly movement that you might get. I think that's probably the best of both worlds. We've got quite a bit of cross bracing going on for stabilisation as well as some square section pieces of aluminium on the panel to clamp them down mid-panel as well as the saddle joints around the edges. Okay so all that's left to do now is to uh, wire the panels up uh, usually on a uh, boat the best thing is to have them in parallel. That's because of shading issues. Uh, what happens if you, uh, you shade one cell on uh, a panel, the other panels and the other parts of the cell will try and feed voltage back into it. Um, so normally because there's so many shading issues on a boat, uh, parallel is better. You don't get so much of that problem. Um, here, for the position I've got really, it's the, uh, the radar. Uh, that's going to provide any significant shading uh, here, maybe a little bit from the backstay. Uh, but because I haven't got too many shading issues, I can actually do this in series, which has the advantage of uh, not upping the amperage too much. I'm going to double the voltage by putting them together in series, but the amperage stays the same. So I've got smaller um, cables to deal with, um, and uh, actually upping the voltage means there's less loss you know, within the cables in that way. Um, the other option you, you do have obviously is to 
wire them separately to two separately separate controllers um, but then of course you've got double the wires and you've got to find space for the controller. So let's get these ones wired up. Okay just before I do the final connection then I'm just going to make sure that the panels are working as I expect them to. The uh, female connector this one is the positive so I'll just have a little look at that on the voltmeter yeah I've got 35 volts across that one 36 37 yeah 37 volts thereabouts that's about right that's what these are rated at let's check the other one and positive is the female negative is that one and yeah 36.9 volts so that's all good so obviously they're going in series so I'm connecting the positive and negative of one of these together. That's that one. So now if I have a little look across here. With both of these together. I've got 73 volts, so that's all looking good. Okay, somewhere in the installation of solar panels you're going to have to put a connector on, it's usually these MC4 connectors which are fairly universal now and pretty good, they're waterproof, good for boats. Um, so they're fairly straightforward, it's just a stripping only of about a centimetre of uh, the double insulation that I've got on these off and the main thing about this is you want to make sure that you are crimping these in properly with a proper set of uh, crimpers. Um, this is something that you really can't skimp on. You can get these little things. I use this as a cutter, the bottom end of it, but these these little top bits here, which you know are supposed to be able to crimp little connectors. I mean, they don't do a very good job at all. I wouldn't really want to use them for that, and I certainly wouldn't want to use them for this. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, current going through these things. I mean, I've got mine here in series, um, so there's not a massive amount, but still a lot. You're talking about big solar panels here. Um, so you want to make sure that you've done the best job you can with these, and, and that's with a, a proper crimp. Now the other thing I'll do before I crimp these is use a bit of dielectric grease. It's something I use on all electrical connections. It's uh, not, as a lot of people think, uh, a conductor, dielectric is means it's an insulator, but um, that doesn't mean to say you're insulating this and making this a uh, not such a good connection when, when you've put the grease on. What it means is that it's not going to oxidise, it's not going to have any reaction. We know stuff on boats is, is going to always have problems with corrosion of, of one sort or another and this will stop that. Uh, once you've crimped this on, or even if it's just a spade terminal that you put on, um, it's not that the grease gets between the two contacts, it doesn't. It's the metal to metal contact as you slide something in or crimp something on that gives you the, that electrical connector. This makes no difference to the, um, the, the conducting properties of the uh, connector itself. What it does do is protect it from corrosion in future and that corrosion going through and making this a bad connection. I think at some point I'll try and make a, a video to put it out there to find get people's uh, tips for the, the best things they keep on the boat. This is definitely in my top 10 list of things to have on a boat because it's, uh, it's going to just make your connections so much better over time. So having got a little bit of uh, dielectric grease on there, I can offer it up to the crimper. It goes in the, uh, the one here. It's just the right size. And you just push this into the insulation and squeeze until it goes click. Just there. And then pull it out. Offer that up, just push it in, do it up. Nice and tight. There is a special little plastic tool, which I can't find. I don't know what I've done with it. So I'll go to the old-fashioned method and just do the final little time. And that's good to go. All wires lead to the MPPT controller, which I've put in our shoe locker. It's mounted upside down just for a better cable run, and I'll have remote monitoring, so I won't have to stand on my head to read it. 
It's partly gone in here because there wasn't a lot of room in the engine bay, but also it's best to keep it out of the heat and stick it in here. Because of that, I have got an extra wire here, which goes through to where the batteries are to tell the MPP controller what temperature the batteries are at. Now, with the uh, power off, I'll do the final bit of just stripping these and attaching them. Obviously I've marked positive and negative, don't want to get them the wrong way around. And I'll tighten and yeah, nice and tight. Reconnect the MC4 connector and let the sun go to work. The sun barely rises though in February in England, but I'm still getting 10.3 amps out of the new solar panels. And 3.2 out of the one on the doghouse. Not bad. We just have to see how much that improves as we go south and we get into summer. If you've enjoyed any of these videos, please hit the subscribe button. As a new channel, it's important it helps people find us. And if you want to follow what we're doing now, go over to Facebook and hit the follow button.